Two heads, two eyes, two guys. Only shooting stars break the mold. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and today I'm playing with Borborygmos and Fibblethip. They put two of our favorite one-eyed creatures together onto one card. In this card, when it enters the battlefield, draws a card and then lets you throw lands at a creature to you know, act as a little bit of removal when you get this creature either into play or attacking. There's also another ability that you can put Borborygmos and Fubblethip into your library, but I don't think you're actually ever going to use it. And this deck is not a lands deck. It's actually a stompy deck, though it does have a lot of ways to get lands and other cards into hand. Uh, this deck is really fun. And if you're saying, well, Amy, you just like team or stompy decks, you're right. I do like Teamer Stompy decks. I think that they are so much fun. And if you're wondering, Amy, why did you build Borborygmos and Fibblethip now? Well, it's because we just got the case of the Lost Witness. This is a card that cares about you having a legendary homunculus, like our commander, Borborygmos and Fibblethip. Once this has been around for one turn with your commander on the board, you get to play lands and spells off the top of your deck. And it's just so much good value for two mana. It's so sweet. This being a stompy deck, it also means that we are running lots of ramp, especially creatures, and then haste enablers, ways to stop things from being counters, fights, and then the biggest, beatiest, most versatile cards that these colors have to offer. Um, I tried to run a mix of some uh, new favorites and some old favorites because there's always good stuff to play in this deck. So we're going to take Borborygmos and Fubbled Up into the queue and we're gonna throw some lands right at our opponent's creatures. Hello there, Gonti, Lord of Luxury. Are you looking forward to stealing cards from my library and then casting them? Oh, don't duress me. Ah, they got rid of my Cultivate. No matter, behold, my goose, Gilded. I do like a good Gilded Goose. Gonti's Death Touch is probably going to be like one of the trickier things for us to deal with. Thankfully, we have ramp. Uh, do I want this ramp or that ramp? This one, because it lets me play the loam speaker. Such a silly goose. I like four mana Borborygmos and Fubble Thup. Do you play Gonti this turn? I have enough lands to discard to kill him. Oh, nope, they're they're doing violence. Don't cook my goose, too. Actually, you can cook my goose, that's fine. Loam speaker. All right, so they're, they're just killing my ramp. I think that that's a very viable thing to do on this turn. Uh, I'm going to grab my wooded foothills and then pass the turn. Probably just making food. I like food for goose because food for goose means Borborygmos next turn. And they're going to steal from us! Looking at the top four, and taking one to cast later. Hey, Gonti. You're cool. This is one of my favorite cards. Enter the battlefield, do a crime. And yes, Gonti does commit a crime by targeting an opponent. Do I want to discard two lands to get rid of Gonti? I don't think so. Gonti is an enter the battlefield trigger, so I feel like it's better for me to just have the lands and deal with there being a 2-3. You kill Gonti, he come back. Oh, how heartless. Murdering my... Beveled up and Borborygmos before I can even get my great henge down for more card advantage. Tangled Florahedron, Stomping Ground. I'm not even gonna bother holding priority here. Make a food. The goose is on the loose. Here for Honk and Bonk. We don't have that many ways to buff the goose in this deck, but there are ways to do it. So you can cause goose-related violence. Oh, cute. So what 
Because I didn't wait until end step, they are able to destroy our food. That was my food reclamation sage. This is also my reclamation sage. If you're wondering, where did that come from? The answer is my deck. <laughs> We're Rigmos and Fubblethup once again entering the battlefield. No, I'm good. Part of the cards that we can uh, solve the case of the lost witness. I I really want to. It's so good with Borbrigmos and Fubblethup. Oh, don't you be murdering. I get it. That's what you do. Mono black decks just do a lot of killing. They crave violence. I am not blocking Gonti. Take another two damage. Oh. Hey, girl. I think this still lives, right? Or is it exactly enough? Oh, it's exactly enough to kill it. Cute. Um, sure, I'll move you back to the command zone. It would be able to just attack this. Treasure, destroying the guardian idol. If I do play Dom right here, it will distract damage from my face, but that's not what I feel I need the most. We're gonna put four copies of Fibblethup into our deck, then draw a card. Fubblethup's fine. He's a cantrip. With, like, like, considering how many things we have that are like, when you cast a creature, draw a card, it's really nice. So tempting to just play this on their own. It's just, they keep killing him. So sad. Just let me solve the case. The Lost Witness. Okay, I will discard these two to kill Massacre Girl just because my life total's getting kind of uncomfortably low for me. Yes! Okay, we made it to end step with Borbrigmos and Fubblethup still alive, which means the case is solved. And until they remove it... I can look at the top card of my library at any time and play lands and cast spells from the top. You usually have to pay so much mana to get this ability. You gotta play like chip and equip. You gotta protect it. You gotta play things that are easily destructible. You know what? Black is not very good at destroying. Enchantments. Nice. Okay, so I'm in a little bit of an awkward spot here. Doesn't matter. Bolt. Gwenna? Say yes, please, Gwenna. The beast at Queesting? Oh, <gasps> monkey! Aren't I a lucky girl? Future Sight is five mana. Yeah, Future Sight is five mana. This is two. Two mana. Ooh, look at that good gravy. Grave Titan out here, making a bunch of zomboys and zomb girls. Uh, Rootbound Crag. Ooh, Galta. I'm going to start with Domri to increase the power of these. Then I'm going to tap, tap. Because this will untap Gwenna, get me more mana. Great Henge for two. Make a mana. We got good manners here. Manners and bananas. I'm gonna throw the Grave Titan back into their hand. Played Restless Ridgeline. This. Oh, it's on top of my deck. All right, yeah. We're just gonna attack in with everything. Trade 
trading with the monkey. I'm going to get some treasures. They're down to seven life. I'll just tap this to gain two. Pass the turn. Hmm. Monkey. What's up with the weird text on the cards? It's a visual glitch. I don't know what's causing it. By the way, we could have uh, also just fought the Grave Titan, uh, trading, for example, the Questing Beast or Galta with it. I figured this was more fun. They flip over their treasure cove. They sacrifice a treasure to draw a card. Probably looking for some removal, trying to take these out. They've already used one board wipe, Invasion of Fiora. They have five mana remaining. Can you defeat these? Sheldred, who gains you life and drains your opponent. We draw. It hurts. But I have 16 life to work with. Oh. Um. Hey. Oh, right. I should be tapping Gwenna. This hurts. But doesn't hurt as much as... Oh, the Rhythm of the Wild. We solved the case. We did solve the case of the Lost Witness. And it won us the game. GG, Gonti. Voya, Jaws of the Conclave. Wolves and elves, elves and wolves, buffing each other, drawing cards, and being generally very powerful. Uh, I think Voya is one of those kind of nutty good cards, in part because it's got Ward 3, which means once it's on the battlefield, good luck getting rid of it. Uh, let's use this Wooded Foothills to grab... Reading pool. Shock it in. Army of Bamboo Groves. For the storm carved coast. We're ramping. Tommy of Bamboo Groves, by the way, is a bit of a double good stuff in this deck because it can also put more lands in your hand, which I like. More lands is more good. We attack for one. Oh yeah, the, this wash away is a good reason why I kept this hand. Now I could hit this Paradise Druid here. Um, I actually don't think that would be terrible since it would be interrupting their mana and reducing the number of elves they have. Oh, hello, Minsk and Boo. I'm going to use key to the archive here. Lightning Bolt, claim the firstborn, and putrefy. Uh, I will grab this Lightning Bolt. I'm going to drop the Stubborn Denial because the cards I'm more worried about from them are not non-creatures. They're creatures. Something, something, Bolt the Bird, right? Now we got Fubble Thup, but we also have Minsk and frickin' Boo. Let's go. This is just one of the best cards, and it's going to do a lot for us. We're going to just swing in for five. Eventually, I can sacrifice our hamster or another creature, deal some damage, draw some cards. Minskibu, why are you so good? Ooh, Elspeth conquers death. R.I.P. Minskibu. You know what? Better you than me, right? Not really. Oh, Rigamus and Fubble Thup. Since this also triggers on attack, it's pretty good for me to just get it down now. I won't be able to use this lightning bolt because it would be taxed by two. Um, Settle the Wilds currently would get us a six drop. What six drops do I have? I don't have Primeval Titan in this deck, I think. I have Surik and Gorkla. I think that might be six. Okay, giving everybody haste. We'll be able to bring out that Paradise Druid, too. Not a land. I think I was off by one, just going for face. That grabbing the um grabbing the six drop is a good move here. Okay, we got Kogla and Yudaro. Not bad. Uh I've got this lightning bolt I could hold up, but I'm going to go for Topiary Stomper instead. They might be able to win off of just a huge attack this turn. And guess what? If they do, good for them. I am going to bank on my creatures being more awesome than them with without lightning bolt. 
Alright, Boya. Boya does have haste. And also a little bit of that vigilance trample. I love a good roaming throne. They will draw four cards because they have two wolves. And the ability is doubled. Also get lots and lots of counters. We take eight. Rhythm of the Wild. Kogla and Yadaro. We're going to give it haste. It's going to fight the Tireless Provisioner. And everybody is going to swing in. Hey, Boya! How do you like Lightning Bolt to the face? Not so much, it seems. GG, Boya, Jaws of the Conclave. Atraxa, Praetor's Voice, the proliferating Atraxa. This Atraxa is really good with Planeswalkers, plus one, plus one counters, and Poison. I personally run it as a Poison deck because it's really strong. <laughs> I, I actually also have a Saga's version of Atraxa, which is not good, but very funny. To me and nobody else nobody else thinks it's as funny as i think it is they have two mana huh. i have a choice between different forms of ramp if I play Sumberwald Sage and it survives the turn, we actually have the chance at getting a Tali out. So I'm going to go for that. Hi, Liliana. Unfortunately, this does have one toughness, so Liliana can plus and kill it. Tragic. Ooh, but this explore opens me up to some cool possibilities. Go with this one. A ramp into ramp into topiary stomper. Keep on grabbing lands. They have shrunk my topiary stomper. Liliana, the last hope. Not using that minus, just using that plus, but approaching ultimate off the proliferate from this Atraxa. Boop. Ah, only one land. Here, would you like to plus and kill this? Hopefully they don't have like a sorcery speed proliferate here. If they do, they do. Very Time Raveler will stop me from casting instants on their turn, or I guess spells on their turn in general, and it will be able to bounce something back into my hand, and they're bouncing Topiary Stomper! Cool. You're bouncing Topiary Stomper? Um, I think I'm bouncing everything. Just maybe. Or do I want to go for a Tali, roll them bones, and be like, ah, who cares if she ults? No, I'm going to bounce everything. Uh, I'm sorry, but please leave. Thank you. Get to draw a card. Ooh, Restless Ridgeline. Throw that into play. Don't feel like I need to save it for removal. I'd rather just get my lands down. Fairy Time Raveler coming down. If they bounce this, I don't have haste. And I also, tragically, tragically, can't hit Planeswalkers with Borborygmos and Fibblecup's ability. Oh, do you have too many cards in hand? Oh, they do! They have to discard!
Uh, this next move uh, is dedicated to my deep, undying hatred of Teferi. I just hate him and want him gone. That's why he's dead now. Just get a dinosaur out of a mountain. This art is really cool. Hi, Vorinclex. Vorinclex is going to double Planeswalker's loyalty abilities as they enter the battlefield, which means that he is now enemy number one. Also, if I have a Planeswalker, which I don't think I have, um, it would get half loyalty, or counters in general would get halved. I don't have a way to get enough lands off that, so I'm going to try to use Atali here to get some goods. Oh, time warp's pretty good. Might actually get me a lethal swing. We swing in for four. We get down Galta. Um, Topiary Stomper, maybe. We just swing in and that, yeah, we, we have enough to end the game here. Nice. Always good to steal your opponent's time warp. GG. Atomic Wielder of Law gets a discount based on the number of Planeswalkers you control. That's what this guy does. Meaning that we're probably playing against super friends. Tomic and all of his buddies from across the multiverse join together, though we all know he has affinity for only one real planeswalker, and that's Rawl, his husband. Hi, Tomic. I built a Tomic deck. It's fine. <laughs> he's, a, he's also a bit of like a taxes stacks kind of deck. Punishes you for attacking with lots of creatures. Um, He's a pretty good guard. And as a three mana, two, four flyer, that's not bad. Let's ramp. They have a wall. They have a planes. Oh, how heartless. Since I don't have four mana this turn, I guess I'll just hold Prismari command. A truly heartless act. Killing a Phyrexian beast that's eating garbage. I don't know. I feel like that's um not that morally questionable. Ooh, Bankbuster! Now that's a good artifact to destroy. Let's do that. Um make a treasure, destroy an artifact. Treasure, artifact, die. Do I want to hold up Memory Lapse? Play my commander? Or just play like a good card here? I'm going to play Key to the Archive to set up for the ability to potentially double spell next turn. Electrolyze, Lightning Helix, and Putrefy. I'm going to grab Putrefy and drop the Abraid. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because Abraid can't kill Tomic and Putrefy can. Uh, I also do have the ability to get black mana off this treasure if I really, really need it. I could also just like throw lands at Tomic though, which is kind of what we do in this deck. We draw a card. Ooh. But I want a ramp. I want a ramp. Don't throw any lands. No throw land. Just chill and vibe and hang. Oh, hi, Matt. Oh, it's Count Dracula. Oh, put him back on top of the deck. Am I ready to spring forward? Is it daylight savings this weekend? That's crazy. Nice. Oh, look what we put on top of the deck! They never saw it coming. No way they ever could have suspected this. The card they literally put on top of their deck. All right, we're going to blast Tomic with the Borbor -Bor Blast. Oh, 
I'll play a forest. Well, does that mean I have to wake up an hour earlier tomorrow? Oh, no. Oh, hey, Kaya. Are you going to exile Atali? That would be fair. He's kind of a problem. The Borbor -bor Blast. I love Borbor -bor Blast. I don't think Fubblethip is really involved in the blasting part of this card. Reveal? Reveal! I love reveal. I also love draw card. Perhaps draw land? Land good. Go to combat. Um, I will swing at Kaya and at face. I got extras. Pop it. An hour less of gaming time, though. What's a girl to do? Liliana having us both sacrifice creatures. I will sacrifice the Tangled Florahedron and the Vampire Token. I do like the Vampire Token's evasion, able to get a lot uh, closer to these Planeswalkers, but I feel like I'm going to be able to attack them soon. They're saying good game, though. We have lethal if they don't manage to get a blocker. And they didn't manage to get a blocker, so we're just going to swing in and take them out. GG, Tomic. Alayla, Artful Provocateur. Whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment, you get a fairy, and Alayla makes those fairies stronger. Uh, this hand rules because it has a turn one delighted halfling. Also Ragavan, but also delighted halfling. Very delightful. I'm probably going to start with a halfling against an Alayla deck. Oh, and look at that. Ragavan becomes slightly yes less useful here. Uh, Amy, Turbo Ramp versus Crime. Turbo Ramp versus Crime. Crime. I know he also ramps, but he doesn't ramp as hard as the Halfling into Cultivate line. This, I would say, demands an answer a lot faster. Like that. They have an answer. They have a blocker now. I actually think hitting the um, Shatter, Shatter Skull Smashing wouldn't be a bad choice here. Going for the 1-3 uh, the here. Hello there, would you like to block? Let it be known that they have blocked. I'm going halfling over the loam speaker here because this deck is in blue. And that means counter spells are real and they can't hurt me. Shatter Skull is not a land in hand for the purposes of Borborigmos and Fubblethup's discard ability. Our monkey is dead. It's okay. I got the maggot out of my skull. That's important, too. Huh. A paladin class. Invasion of Zendikar. Going to grab two lands, blue and green. I like Paladin class with Alayla because if you use the buff abilities, your fairies get they get to be threats. Oh, looks like they must have like an extra bit of a token sub build. That's kind of awesome. <gasps> yeah. Uncounterable Atali. Let's go. What do we steal? Ephemia? 
nice. Uh, I will not be getting many Ephemia uh, triggers, though. I don't have that many enchantments in my deck. We do have some, though. We do have some. I remember back when Standard Brawl was all we had. I built an Ephemia deck. She was kind of cool. She's very aggressive being a two-mana, two-one flyer. Some triple blue here for the ramp. Just keep ramping. Just keep ramping. I wonder if they'll have a board wipe. Best not to dwell on it too much. <laughs> People are asking about the, the weird uh, text pop-ups where the text is like almost illegible because it will show up as like black on dark gray. It's a graphical issue and I have no idea what causes it. Ooh, Vampiric Rites. You're right. That's a good card. Um, all my stuff doesn't get the haste. I can just flip over a tolly though. That's, that sounds really good to me. Um, let's do that. Pay two life. I'll attack with everything but the Sumberwald Sage. Because we have stuff with Trample, I am going to bop Alayla for two extra damage. They get a couple poison counters, just a few. Bugs on Arena? Never! Aww, they played a little guy. A little guy who can protect. Oh, Demonic Vigor also helps protect. Rexian Arena gets them more of these, but also will lose them a life at the start of turn. They're going for a little bit of life gain, attacking with Alayla. Um, guess we're going to combat. This time, I'll animate a land, we'll swing in with everything, and hopefully end the game. GG, Alayla. Tatiova, Steward of Tides. When a land enters the battlefield, if you have seven lands, you animate a land. It becomes a 4-4 elemental creature, and if she is on the battlefield. It also has flying. Uh, this hand has good cards, but not until turn three. So we're going to mulligan. Look at that. We found our little rampers. Oh, in the case of the Lost Witness. I, th I think people can tell that I love this card. Just because I actually revealed this card. I made the video for Wizards of the Coast showing off this card. And in it, I was like, yeah. Uh, I'm immediately after seeing this card, I realized I have to build Borborygmos and Fibbletop, so I have an excuse to play Case of the Lost Witness because I love this card. Just look at it. Just look at it. Ooh, Azusa. We have a really nice turn uh, as far as ramping goes. So did they. Azusa letting them play a bunch of extra lands here. Uh, I need blue in order to do the cool turn, which means this will be coming in tapped later. That's fine. Go to combat. Swing with the goblin. And then I'll bring out... Here you did. A bam Inga and Essica giving our creatures vigilance is very nice in this deck, since Borborygmos and Fibblethup is very good at attacking or blocking. Ooh, Entish Restoration. By the way, they, for alchemy, buffed Tatiova to be a 4-4 four, four and make the lands into 4-4s. Four, I think it was 3-3 um, three, three and 3-3 three, three before. Like, she was a 3-mana three 3-3. Three, three. Oh, nice! Indestructible creature! Oh, god, that's a lot of you, huh? 
Um, I can get rid of their flying. That's probably a good idea. I'll be able to replay her, though, since I have a lot of mana. This is fine. So draw me a card from Inga and Essica. I could also just, like, destroy a forest. Only you can cause wildfires. Die, Taddy Ova. I yeet land at land. Yep. Uh, I will go to combat, swing in with Inga and Essica. A beautiful couple damage. Uh, I will tap her for green. And then we will again solve the case of the Lost Witness. I do control a legendary homunculus. Oh, confounding conundrum. That's good against their deck. Your lands enter the battlefield, you got to return them to hand. It's also kind of like a little awkward for us because it does mean that they could like play a land, get the trigger, play it again to get the trigger. That's only good though if they're already very ahead on lands, which they are. Thanks, Azusa. That's just what you do, Zuh. Ramen up Excavator. Oh, they're tapping out. Paramorphic Expanse. These are all tapped. I do have to be worried about them just swinging in for lethal all in one turn. So many creatures. Ah! What if I had a board wipe? Just like imagine. So by the way, this is Azuzo letting them just do all of this. Hmm. You being a four four actually does make this a lot trickier. I'll attack him with Borborygmos and Dinga and Essica. I'm going to discard two lands. Kill Tatiova to take away the flying. I do want that with that form of tapping. Killing this before they can uh, go back and do this stuff again. Play this Dream Root Cascade. Confounding Conundrum. A blocker for a blocker. I'll take it. Cool. Okay, so they have a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. What if they want to replay Tatiova? They'll have to tap a lot of these lands. Monkey! Aww, Inga and Essica going to be taken off the battlefield. Cutting me off from an awful lot of mana there. Mean monkey. Have that lands. Draw two, discard two. Okay, they have one, two, three. Two damage. I'm digging. I'm gonna drop the things that are very tappy.
attack with Borborygmos and Fubblethup. I will kill a land. Island is land. I imagine they'll just block with the Dark Steel. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a free block. Looks like they're also going to block with a forest. That's fine. This is indestructible, so I can't really do anything about it. Can't cast this though. X equals six. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But I can only kill at most two creatures, so I think the X equals six is the right move. Uh, let's go for. Do I want to go for Kogla or just two lands? I think going for two lands is actually better, even though they can destroy my case at a locked hot house. You're not a human. Whew. Yeah, so she, she costs seven mana right now. They have seven mana, exactly. I would save the damage spells for Tatiova if they were instant speed, but they're not. Okay, each creature... Okay. All non-land permits chosen this way, back into their hands. Because these are all lands. Neat. Neat. I block a forest <laughs> and I take the damage from everything else. I'm alive. Do you have any blockers? All right, so they're going all, all the way up to 10. Can I deal? Can I deal three more damage? I don't have anything hasty here. I'm sorry, I, I am I am doing the, the big think dig. We do we do have a fling effect in this deck. If I top deck Minskin Boo, mmm. I did in fact not top deck Minskin Boo. I can get a bunch of blockers out. Is that it? blockers that are also managed. We also have a bunch of haste enablers. We just did not find one. Okay. They have four attackers. Or sorry, five attackers. Up to six if they got another, but no, that wouldn't work. Um, I'm trying to decide if I can attack in. And I, the answer is no. I can't attack in. Mm. I did what I could. But what I could do was not enough. They had enough mana to play Tatiova. Have two lands still in because they did draw that land. And we are dead. GG Tatiova. That was a great game. Narset. Enlightened Master. This is the Hexproof Narset that gets a bunch of free spells when she attacks. She's pretty annoying to play against because it's really hard to get rid of her. And in this deck, well, I actually just showed my, like, one of few ways to get rid of her. It's to counter her. Memory Lapse. Um, there are also other ways, other means to get around her. 
but I'm not really running them. I I'd say our best strategy against them is to either counter her or go fast. Gotta go fast. Constantly have to go fast. Uh, let's bring out Domri here for a bit of uncounterability. Are you gonna counter my uncounterable? No, please, thank you, okay. And then I will ramp. Trying to get that Borbor and Fubblethup out. Do I have any suggestions for decks with Essica or Tobalor as commander? I'll warn you that if you want to play five color Essica in Arena, you are going to be playing a very, very, very powerful playing field. You're going to be playing up against some of the meanest decks available, and you just have to be ready for that. They got rid of my only blue mana. That's fine. We'll find some more, I hope. Tobler, you can definitely build wolves and werewolves. You can awu so hard in this game. It's not that good of a card, or like as a deck, but it is really fun. We have uh, Inga and Essica, though. I actually have that in this deck. Alright, let me just double check how much mana I have. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go for Teamer Ascendancy first. Bor Bor and Fubblethup. Can't be countered. Can be returned to hand. And if they play land, I am unable to counter here. Since uh, I don't have blue mana. Here she comes. It's Narset Enlightened Master. Uh, I can't fight her. I can do very little to her. But I can flip over that Invasion of Zendikar. I could try to get a board wipe off of Key to the Archive. We have options here. It's just a matter of which one I want to take. Uh, I'm going to start with the key to the archive. Just kind of see what we get here. Time warp, huh? That could be nice. That could be very nice. Not going to crack open these maps even though it would give us a better blocker. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I will be able to counter something cast from outside of hand. Oh, okay. Um, Narset's attacking Domri. A lot of recollection. Grabbing this unsubstantiate. They want to bounce more stuff. That's cool. Um, that's most dangerous with something like this, but you know. We'll do our best. Only I still had a little bit of haste. Forbarigmos and Fubblethup. Would you like to unsubstantiate it? Throw it back into my hand? They're going to reprieve it to start. Uh, they don't have any blue mana up, though. That's kind of cute. They can get one blue mana by using Field of Ruin or Demolition Field, though. As if they're destroying my man land. Oh, man. Land. I'm gonna get some extra turns. Thank you for putting a land in my graveyard. A uh, slow Gurk likes that. Did Narsa hit three lands? Yes. Yes, she did. Great, right? Slow Gurk likey. Slow Gurk? Very happy. I don't need no explore. Barbaragmos and Fubblethup. I mean, I guess I'll just do this first, because I can't fight Narset. Maybe this is my fault. I should put a Shadow Spear in my deck. I mean, I should just put Shadow Spear in, like, every deck, right? It's a good card. And Roaming Throne. Yeah, you put Roaming Throne in and you name Homunculus.
Wow. Okay, so they hit lands and candy trail. Narset, girl, are you all right? Um, okay. Are you okay, Narset? Did, did you shuffle, like, really badly? I think they shuffled really badly. Sorry, Narset. Your free spells were not worth it. Dahlia and the Gitrog monster. Just a girl and a frog hanging out together. Also, making it so our non-basic lands enter the battlefield tapped, our creatures enter the battlefield tapped, they can play additional lands each turn, and if they attack and they sacrifice a land or creature and then draw a card. Uh, it also has first strike and death touch, so I will lose if I try to fight it. Like, I will I will lose. Not fight like Domri fight, but if I try to go into combat and I don't have enough lands to throw at it, it's not gonna work. I could go for Case of the Lost Witness here. Confound and Conundrum, since they play extra lands. Um, I would hold up Memory Lapse if they had one more mana, but they don't. Confound and Conundrum says, hey, you want to play extra lands in a turn? Too bad. Put those back where they came from. Uh, I think that Confound and Conundrum is the kind of card that I'm including in decks, not because I really like the card, but I've been including it in decks because talk is real and people play him. A pock being the card that, uh... <laughs> the, the, the one that doubles the lands. It's just, just kind of rough. All right, so we're going to crack open our Bloodstained Mire. We will use it to grab, I don't know. We can grab a duel. Duels are cool. Too cool for duel. Memory Lapse! Put that on top of their deck. If only I had seven mana and could steal it. That would be rad, but I don't. Um, I can't afford to play Borbrigmos and Thibblethup because of the Curse of Silence, but I can play another creature here. We have Domre. We can use to ramp an extra green. I'll shock in. Here's Gwenna. She's a 3-3 three -three for now. She taps for two mana, so I will be able to play a big creature next turn. Hello. They're attacking Domri, probably so I don't fight anything. That's fine. Gonna crack open the clue. Ooh, no, they're gonna use Wandering Emperor. So if I had blocked, I would have been just losing that Gwenna. I'd rather lose the uh, Domri since we're not against many counter spells here. Hey, why'd you leave? I didn't get to show you my cool move. But we probably did win. GG Thalia and the Get Rog Monster. A Johnny, the Great Hearted. He gives your creatures vigilance and can put plus one, plus one counters on them and can gain you life. He's doing a lot of different, really great things for a bunch of different strategies. Uh, I would say this deck is probably a scales, meaning plus one, plus one counter, and a little bit of Selesnia good stuff. Just kind of going off of what I would build this deck as. Big Kitty. Him go meow. Nice halfling. Nice hobbits. Ah. A nice little proliferator here. Settle the wilds. Just gonna ramp here. Right now, they don't have anything to proliferate. There's the thing to proliferate. The Orin Reef Ooze coming in. This will also put counters on things when it attacks. Orberigmos and Bubblethup comes into play. Uh, I will absolutely discard this land to deal to, to the Orin Reef Ooze. Do you choose to ooze? A Johnny putting a counter on this means that I won't have a good trade. They will deal damage to me, and these will proliferate. 
Why does a Johnny have flavor text? Oh, uh, it's a quote from War of the Spark because it's the stained glass version of it. In case you were wondering, that is the actual reason. Anybody got any lands? Anybody got any lands? <laughs> Anybody here got any lands? Cool, 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 cool. Big contaminator. Aww. They killed Domri. Well... Guess I'll get poisoned and proliferated a little bit more. I didn't even bring up the fact that it has toxic, but I do have um, six poison on me right now. Do I have any way to get rid of you? We know there's not a land on top of our deck. Thank you, Oracle of Moldiah, for revealing this incredible information. More ascendancy on top. Oh, um, yeah, that's fine. Sleepy opening lightning bolt. Wow, still no land. I'll drop the confounding conundrum. Not really going to do much here. We're also now holding the stubborn denial in case they try to cast a cheeky spell. Aw, Lotus Cobra! <gasps> Landfall! Night of Autumn. These are all fine. We have to double block, uh, because otherwise too much damage will go through. And I'm going to choose to just bolt the Night of Autumn before they can get that proliferate. I will go to eight poison and two life, though. But since they've been missing land drops, uh, we can, we will be able to take a little bit of advantage of that. I will attack in. Land? That's not a land. It does get lands, though. I have many ways to get some creatures out, though. Uh, I'm feeling... Kiora. Scrap Gorger. Karyatid. And untapping so I have Stubborn Denial available. Because I'm very stubborn. Hmm, Danker Bloom. It looks not uh, shock in anything here. I'll tack in with Borborygmos and Fubblethub. We got some lands. I'm going to drop the shock land here. Uh, use it to kill Lotus Cobras to keep them away from a Johnny. Tanker Bloom, I guess you can drop it to proliferate nothing. Oh, I guess you proliferate the poison, right? Yeah, it puts me to nine poison. Guardian Project. A little baby. Oh, Boron Clex. Just grab some uh, basics here. Um, triggers, triggers, triggers happen. We have this extra floating mana that can only be used for creatures. 
And I'm going to untap another blue source, just in case. And I can also eat my food, just in case. If they have a creature-based proliferate, we would lose right here. But if it's a spell that's not a creature, we can counter it, and we're pretty safe. GG, Johnny. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. I hope you liked watching us smash and stomp and toss a couple lands with Borborygmos and Bubble Thup. Uh, this is a really fun deck to pilot. Uh, if you like to have big spells attacking your opponent, this could be the deck for you. Um, I will say that this deck is fairly flexible on its top end. Whatever big, good spells you want to put in a deck, you're ramping, so just throw them in there. I tend to focus on these big green spells just because that's more my taste than, say, Eldrazi or, you know, other Holebreaker Horror type spells. I like things that are big and green. And maybe you do, too. If you're looking for the deck list, it's in the description of the video. And if you'd like to suggest a commander, especially one of the new ones, or if you'd like me to revisit an old deck list, please let me know in the, like, the comments. Uh, I do read all of the comments, and I do see uh, what you guys suggest. Uh, I do see that some folks are asking for things like Alicia and Naeth, um, Inga and Essica, Goshen, Ty, and Koth. Thank you all for suggesting those decks. Uh, those decks, by the way, do go on polls on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Amazonian. That's where I record these videos and I stream almost every single day. So if you would like to, uh, I don't know, vote for your commander, you should also tune into the stream. I can't tell you when we're doing the polls though, because it's just kind of whenever I feel like it. It's like, yeah, you know what time it is? It's time for y'all to pick what deck we brew. Between me doing like 20 games of Nicol Bolas crime because I have a problem and the problem is that I love crime and not committed a crime. Wizards of the Coast, targeting your opponent's spells is not a crime. Stealing your opponent's spells is a crime, and it's the kind of crime that I like to do. Thank you so much for watching, and have a brutal day.